Well, hello there. <laughs> How are you doing? I wish we were together. There were a lot of schools that I was planning to visit in April and May and share the new book that I've written. And now we can't do that. So what's the next best thing? Well, if I can't come to you, how about you join me here at my house and together we'll enjoy the story, How the Ladybug Got Her Spots. Hey, before I even begin, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Melissa Webb and I am a teacher. I'm also a mom. I have all boys and I also have the cutest dog ever. Her name's Ginger. And we're doing what you're doing, and that is staying home a lot so that we can get this world of ours into a better and healthier state. So that means we need to be a little more creative than normal. We have to start to think of solutions to the problems that we now are dealing with. Do you do that? I hope you think up solutions. Because you know, problems are part of life. They happen all the time. And the important thing is, is that we find a way to solve our problems. So if you can't be together with me and I can't be together with you, why not do it this way and enjoy a story all the same? Sound good? Okay, so I already mentioned a few things about me, but I can't remember if I've told you or not. You've probably put it together. I'm an author. I have written a book that's been published and yes, I had a company put the whole book together, do all the illustrations, you kind of see that, and then run it through a big machine and make a lot of copies, all super fun and exciting. But I'm gonna tell you, this isn't the only story I've written. It's just the only one that's been published. I love to write, and I've written a lot of stories that will never be published, and that's okay, because a lot of times I just write because I love to write. Do you love to write? If you've written a story, whether or not it's been put in a book, doesn't matter. You, my friend, are also an author. Now, the story that I'm gonna share with you today is a special kind of narrative, which is a story. It's called a pourquoi, which is actually a French word, pourquoi. Can you say that? Two syllables, pourquoi. And it means why in French. Now this kind of story is also called an origin story. And all that means is it's a story that explains why something is the way it is. You may have read other stories like these, like um, why the tiger has its stripes or why the giraffe has a long neck. Have you seen any stories like that? If you have, those are called pourquoi and they're really fun to write. Now I bet you already know the difference between a fictional story and a non-fiction story, yes? Okay, just in case you're not quite thinking of it right now, I'm just gonna remind you, fictional stories are make-believe, and pourquois are make-believe stories. So this is a fictional story, not a scientific non-fiction. It's very much made up but that doesn't mean that there aren't some real things about it. So I want you to think about that as you're listening to the story. What parts of this story could be real and what parts of this story are absolutely fictional? Are you ready to jump in and enjoy how the ladybug got her spots? Okay, let's do it. By the way, have you been able to find any of the ladybugs in my house? In this room where I'm sitting right now, where I love to just get all cuddled up and read a good book, I have some ladybug friends. I bet you've probably seen some nearby, but you might wanna see if you can find all of them. All right, let's get started. Here it is, the title page, How the Ladybug Got Her Spots. Here we start. Maybe you've wondered, why don't you, I wanna try and make sure that you're able to see the pictures. This is all so new to us, but hopefully you can see the picture here. Maybe you've wondered, perhaps you have not, just how did the ladybug end up with spots? The story that follows, some will say is not true. 
Just use your own judgment once the story is through. I know, I wish we were together right now because I know some of you, some of you would be like, oh, it's a total rhyming book. You're right, it does, it rhymes all the way through. Maybe I'll stop a couple times and see if you can figure out the missing word. It's a tale that took place quite some time ago, not as far back as dinosaurs, but when life's pace was slow. In a large autumn gardens, like ones seen in books, a young boy named Ted explored creeks and nooks. He found an orange leaf that lay on the ground. Its color and shape like none could be found, yet the leaf by itself was not an unusual thing. It was the little red spot that he found intriguing. And when this little red spot actually moved just a bit, Ted moved a tad closer. Had he imagined it? His eyes did not blink. He just watched with great care as six spindly legs quickly moved here to there. With tremendous delight and a smile so wide, our young explorer friend sat dazed and mesmerized. Ted thought he had seen all the insects there were, from ants, bees, and flies, even a green grasshopper. But this curious bug quickly interested Ted from her solid red shell to her tiny black head. All day they played, and although she could fly, she never did leave him. She stayed by his side. Ted fed her green aphids, which she enjoyed a great deal. He sang her some songs with much joy and true zeal. It happened too fast. The day came to an end. Ted sat and he wondered, will I see her again? Hmm. She crawled to a tree stump where her quality did abound. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of red bugs all around. Yes, all were identical, every one just the same. How could he distinguish her? She did not have a name. Then Ted had a thought. In his pocket, he found a small black marker and he knelt on the ground. Softly, so gently, he inked little black dots. On her red protective shell, she was covered now in spots. He gave a loving smile and then went on his way. But that colony of bugs, they were speechless, I must say. Oh, what a scary time for you, many quickly said. You must be hurt or injured. Thank goodness you're not dead. Oh no, assured the beetle with a sparkle in her eye. I was never treated better. He's a special little guy. But look at what he's done. Your elytra are full of spots. All over your hard shell, he painted multiple black dots. Mm. That round and lovely insect, proud of her new look, snuggled under fallen leaves near the babbling brook. The cluster of her friends sat and analyzed her day. She was cared for, loved, and spoiled in every single way. She's right. In fact, she's lucky. This boy is not a threat. Let's mark our shells with spots and he'll play with us, I bet. Can you see what they're doing? <laughs> And that was how it happened on that lovely day one fall when the love and caring of one small boy inspired spots upon them all. 
All right, there you go. That is my story, how the ladybug got her spots. Now, again, I wish we were together because I would love to ask you all kinds of questions. Like, so could you see parts of the story that could be true? Like what? What could be true? There could be a little boy playing outside, right? Absolutely. And he could even find a little bug. Sure. But do you think if he marked spots on any bug, the spots would stay? And if he dropped a marker, could bugs pick a marker up and put spots on them? That may have been a little imaginative. What do you think? <laughs> a poor quest story is such a fun story to write because you get to use your imagination. There is no right answer. There is no wrong answer. It's just a form of creative writing. So I would love to challenge you to think up a story that you could create. Think about something that makes you curious in this world. What are some things you wonder about? And maybe, just maybe, you have a great story inside waiting to come out, and I would love to hear it. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful day today. I hope you enjoyed the story. Did you find all the ladybugs in my room? There was actually one right over here on the pillow. Do you see that? I got this friend right here. Over on the little table, I think it's in the camera's view, there's a tiny little ladybug. And if you look up on my shelf, this one's tricky, there are actually two. One's very tiny on top of the wooden sign that says happy, and the other one is made out of metal, and it just sits on my shelf. Yes, I do love ladybugs. They kind of surround me all the time. And I hope that whatever brings you joy is absolutely surrounding you too, my friend. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. And until we meet again, right on.